Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. Today is a great day on the Produce Moms podcast. We are welcoming a woman that I recently met, Stacy Ward. She is on the executive board and also serves as a partner and shareholder for Coastal Sunbelt Produce. Stacy has, gosh, really just decades of experience under her belt. She is such a compelling leader. I love her story. I met her, like I said, just this year at an industry event. And, and when I connected with her and realized all of the knowledge within this woman and the grit and not only her professional career, but she's also a marathon runner. So she's just this you know, super focused and disciplined professional and all that she does. She's a mom. She loves produce. She's a natural fit for the Produce Moms podcast. And I couldn't be more honored today to welcome Stacy Ward as our guest. Hello, Lori. Hi, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. No, I, it's, it's an honor. It's something I, the minute I met you, I was like, wow, this woman's a superstar. So let's talk about your journey. Let's explain to our listeners, uh, you know, how you got your start in produce and how it took you to where you are today. Gotcha. Thank you. So I can first off saying that when I was little, I didn't dream of being in produce. So it was something that I completely stumbled upon. Um, after college, I went and worked for a master distributor, Cisco, right out of college. Um, was very happy with my job there. And I started um, just meeting different people in my market. And I spoke with somebody in the market who was a salesperson for Coastal Sunbelt. And he just said to me, you know, I think you would really be a good fit for our company. And I didn't really think produce was exciting or any place that I wanted to end up at. I, I was happy with my career. I went and I did an interview. I met the owners and instantly I knew that this would be something different and something that I wanted to try. And it would be challenging for me, but something I would feel was also rewarding. It was a very small company at the time. Back then it was roughly a 20 to $30 million produce company. Wow. And when was that, Stacey? What, what was year back was in that? 2000 and, I met with them in 2002 and started working for them in 2003. Okay. Yeah. So significant growth. Because I mean, I recently so, toured Coastal Sunbelt and my goodness, uh, so, a tremendous yeah, so amount of growth. We're over yeah, currently we're over $400 million now. Um, two building moves uh, we were in at that time when I started a 15,000 square foot facility. We moved to a 170,000 square foot facility. And then our current building that we moved into three years ago is 333,000 square feet. So it's been quite a journey. When I started out at Coastal, I uh, was hired to manage a contract for a hotel division and it wasn't something our company had ever done before. It wasn't an area that we were focused on, but I thought it would be a good challenge. And I said, hey, I want to learn. So I jumped right into it. And within the first three to five years of me managing this division of our company, it was tremendously successful. We um, were probably taking over 50 to 60 percent of the market in our, in, in our area it was just something that we didn't think would ever grow to that. So we started hiring more people and we started expanding. And so now our hotel division probably is well over $25 million in annual sales. Great. So let's get a little bit of that 101 on Coastal Sunbelt Produce. Help our listeners understand what all you, you provide, because it is a lot more than fresh produce. And also what, what kind of clients you serve and where they're located in the United States. Absolutely. So our company is a distributor in the mid-Atlantic. Our core footprint is Philadelphia down to Richmond. Uh, Coastal Companies actually is uh, what has been formed for our Coastal Sunbelt Produce, and Coastal Sunbelt Produce is a division of the Coastal Companies. The Coastal Companies has three operating companies. We have our fresh distribution company, which is Coastal Sunbelt Produce. Uh, we deliver to hotels, caterers, chain business, some retail in the Mid-Atlantic area, uh, offering six-day-a-week delivery to our customers. Uh, we have a processing company called East Coast Fresh, 
They're primarily focused on our retail division, where it's uh, the BJ's and the Costco's of the world. Um, they have a further footprint than we do. They pretty much service Eastern Seaboard. Uh, they go up uh, above New York all the way down to Florida with their customers that they take care of. And then our third and most recent uh, operating company is Hearn Kirkwood. Uh, they are primarily focused on grab-and-go. They are the, they're the kind of places when you walk into a CVS or 7-Eleven, you have those grab-and-go sandwiches or those protein packs. Their uh, operating company makes those and distributes them. And their reach is, I would say, more, um, I mean, I would say Eastern you know, anywhere from Maine right. all the way down to Florida, but then they also go uh, as far west as into Ohio. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a huge footprint as to where your products are ending up within the United States. And I will say to all of our listeners, uh, when I was in D.C. recently, Stacy and her team invited me to come out and experience Coastal Sunbelt and tour their tour their operation. Uh, what a what a wonderful day that was, Stacy. We had such a good day, and um, you know I was able to see their fresh cut processing uh, in action from the from the viewing platform that you have there for all of your visitors. I was able to sample some of your products, the fresh salsas that you do, the you know some of the sandwiches and other grab and go items like Stacy was describing is available um, to all their visitors and employees in the Coastal Commons. So was able to experience that. I mean, it's really the morale of your company is tremendous. And I want to get to that. But before we actually dive into, you know, the ethos of Coastal Sunbelt Produce and the coastal companies, I'd really love to learn more about your personal journey because I just think it's so inspiring. You know, you got your job, as you said, in 2003 and now, and you worked your way up to having a seat um, in the boardroom to then actually even becoming a partner. So I'd love, you know, if you can tell, tell our listeners a little bit more about your personal journey. Gotcha. Absolutely. So as I said earlier, uh, I was hired at Coastal to manage a um, hotel division of our company. That was a recent and new division. Um, Back in 2008, I had an opportunity in the company to start managing more contract business in our multi-unit chain business. It was a position that opened up and really nobody had any experience or nobody had any desire to do that uh, position. And again, I was very accepting of a challenge and I threw my hands up and I said, I'll try it. And I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I said I'd be willing to learn and I'm gonna work really hard every day to try to figure out everything. I would say produce in general, you learn something new every day. So I'm always challenging myself to learn new things. But back in 2008, I said, okay, I'm going to take this new role on. And I dove into it and it was a lot of work. It was a lot of learning. There's a lot of moving parts into being in the middle of the supply chain. So we're not only dealing with our grower shippers, we're also dealing with the end users and the customers. So we right. are the middle people that has to get the product in from the fields then we have to make sure that we store and keep it uh, fresh. Um, we rotate it, um, and then we have to deliver it to our customers on time. And so it's a very um, fast-moving position of the supply chain that you need to be on. Um, so as I grew on that and as our um, teams began to grow and that we grew more business in the multi-unit, um, obviously then I was awarded a position on the board back in 2010. And uh, I basically just, you know, worked really closely with my CEO. I worked really closely with the partners that were on the board. I was engaged with them. I showed them that I wanted to learn and that I was eager to learn and worked a lot of hours and made sure that I was always available and um, did a lot of traveling and, you know, always said yes, you know, always made sure I said yes to whatever the company demanded, said yes to what my customers needed and what made sure that they were taken care of every day. And uh, things just kind of at that point started to happen for me. Um, I started to be going to more uh, industry events. Um, I started getting more involved. And I think at that point in my career, I kind of knew that I had found the right place and this is where I wanted to grow. And so really since then, it's just been a onward and upward and exciting journey since then. Yeah, almost like a natural progression, so to say. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things, like I said earlier, I didn't ever wake up and dream when I was a little girl that I wanted to be in the produce industry. And I don't think anybody yeah, does. No, me neither. Yeah. But, but once I got here and I said, well, wow, like this is, this is a great industry. There's just so many different things that one person can do in this industry. And there's so many people to learn. I mean, there's so many people to meet. 
Um, there should be different people to meet. And, um, I, you know, I just really just took all that in and embraced it and just made sure, you know, I, I got connected with people. And once yeah. I started doing that and made those connections in the industry, and that's when I really just felt that everything was right. Amen to that. And for anyone listening, uh, you know, Stacy is definitely all of those things that she's just described. I mean, like I said, I just met her this year and um, her story inspired me to the point where I was like, I got to get you on the podcast. We got to make more, we got to make sure that there's more women, more professionals within this industry that know your story, Stacy. It's, it's remarkable. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, you, you kind of mentioned, you know, Hey, as a little girl, I wasn't exactly dreaming of working in produce and I can go on the record saying, yeah, same here. But, um, let's talk about the opportunities for females, um, both at coastal and at the produce industry at large agriculture and the produce industry are, you know, it's, it's certainly not the most female dominated industry. It's quite the opposite. Uh, while the playing field is getting more level. Um, I, you know, I want to call out a few things. I know from our pre-show conversation, Stacy, that you are one of three female partners. Uh, you said there's over a dozen at, uh, coastal companies. So, uh, right there is a great example of, you know, yeah, there's some females in the room, but not quite the percentage, um, that we strive to see as female professionals. So let's talk a little bit about how, uh, the produce industry has shifted for females during your career, um, and how you're helping to shape this culture at Sunbelt, uh, at Coastal Sunbelt that is, um, empowering for all. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you my first industry event I attended back in 2003, it was pre predominantly men. I mean, it right. was, um, and I was very young at the time and I walked into this room and it was, it was mostly men. And I was, I was really nervous. I was like, Oh no, this is crazy. And it, it was like that for a few years. And I, I think produce, you know, everyone has this uh, kind of old school mentality that, you know, if you worked on the farm when you were younger or if your family owned the produce business, um, then, you know, that's when you worked for the produce company. It wasn't a job or a field that people went into right out of college, nor were anybody in the produce industry marketing to colleges. They're doing a lot of that now. I can absolutely say I've worked with several associations that are actually in colleges now to have career paths for people in college right now to actually take their career to the produce industry, um, which I find to be tremendous because it's such a great area to work in. But I can say too that, you know, as our company started to grow and we started to take on, uh, bring on more females, um, my team that I manage is predominantly female because we're in sales with us being that way. I just think we have a different way of, we look at things. I think men and women, or can be completely equal in the workforce, but we just have a different view and intake on how we look at things in different perspectives, which I think helps. And then we collaborate with other people on our teams and we have proven to be successful. Um, our uh, street sales team, for example, uh, used to be predominantly men when I started. I think there were, I was one of maybe eight salespeople and the rest were, were men. And if you look at it, our street sales team now, it's a good 50, 50 mix. And our street sales team is the best in the industry. In my opinion, um, people always come and, you know, want to know how do we get such, you know, such an amazing sales force and where did we find these people? And, and it kind of links back to the culture piece yes. that we talked about. Um, Coastal Sunbelt is really focused on, three things, food, people, and relationships. And when we hire people, we want to make sure that people fit that culture. And when people come to work at Coastal, you know, we tell people, you know, if you take care of our people and you take care of our customers, everything else will take care of themselves. And we do really live by that motto here. Um, and we make sure that we do take care of our people. We have an on-site nurse practitioner. I think when you did your visit, you could yeah. see the Johns Hopkins nurse and she was in there. So, you know, if people don't feel good or if they need medicine um, or if they need to go see somebody because they think they have a sinus infection, um, they don't need to leave work. They can go see our nurse practitioner. Right. And they have access to that regardless as to whether or not they're participating in your benefit program, which I thought was Correct. remarkable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And it's, and it's free of charge to them. It's uh, nothing out of their pockets that they have to pay for. And so, you know, we have a produce store downstairs where if people need uh, to grab a gallon of milk or a dozen eggs, or if they need to grab some lettuce or, or such, they can go downstairs and get that uh, at our produce market. 
we also have uh, our flag raising ceremony, which has been one of the most um, widely uh, respected uh, things that we do. I didn't see the flag raising, but just seeing all the flags hanging in the air, it brings chills down your spine. I mean, it right. describe this because it really is, it's such a testament to the culture you've created. Great. Yeah. So back uh, when we first started the company, our, it was, uh, I would say maybe about 50 to 60 employees. And then we moved into our uh, second facility, not our current facility. Uh, that's when we really started to grow. That was when we showed most of our double digit growth was the 10 years that we were over at our previous uh, distribution center. As that happened and as our retail division of East Coast Fresh started to take off, we needed to bring in more and more employees. And as we started to hire more people in this market, we realized that we had so many different people from so many different parts of the world. Uh, you know, we had, you know, se several different languages being spoken downstairs on the, the, you know, cutting floor or, you know, in our receiving or in our selection. And so at this point we said, okay, well, what are we going to do to represent these people? We, you know, we may not be able to communicate with them on a daily basis if people don't speak that language, but, you know, let's bring something back that they would recognize from their country. So we decided to do this flag raising ceremony and then to have their flag present. So if you would go to our coastal commons area, which is a place where people can go and eat their lunches or they can gather, they can have meetings. In our coastal commons area is all the flags of any employee is from that country, their flag is actually represented and hung in our coastal commons area. So when they go eat their lunch there every day, they may not be able to communicate or speak to the person at the next table, um, but they can at least relate to the flag because they know that their country is being represented. Um, it was really, really cool. Uh, yeah thing that we started to do. And it's been really, um, it, it's to see the pride in some of these people when they see their country flag being raised, it's, it's very, it's very emotional and oh, inspiring. Well, it's amazing what you've created just in your company culture. Um, you know, I, the, the day that I spent there, I met a woman and, um, she just had so much pride when she met me and she doesn't have, you know, the title that you have, Stacy. She is, she's, you know, I don't even remember her title, but I met her in the coastal commons area. And when I told her I was a visitor, she said to me, she's like, well, welcome home. This is our home. And I couldn't, oh, yeah. you know, there's no better compliment right there for an employee to have that kind of uh, regard for their workplace. Yes. No, that was, uh, yeah, that's Ulyssa. She's been here, I would say for at least 20 years. Um, and, and again, it, it is home. It, it's home to us. I mean, we really, really value the relationship that we have here and that we do treat people like family here. And it is my family. I, I know these people on a professional level and most of them on a, on a personal level, although I don't see them, you know, during the weekends or whatnot, it's, it's hard not to make those connections and, and, and be involved, you know, when you're spending the majority of your time here at work with these people. Right. It's just well, been that, you know, naturally how that's happened. A couple of things I think our listeners will really appreciate. We've mentioned Coastal Commons a couple of times now throughout the discussion today. And, you know, uh, when they built, when Coastal Sunbelt built their new facility, Coastal Commons is actually where most buildings would put that corner office. It's that corner office, you know, two two walls of windows, and it's actually an employee gathering space. Uh, so talk a little bit more about that, just how, you know, that matches the ethos of your company where the executives and everyone works together in the, you know, in the area where you and I met, where that conference room is at. And then you've got your dedicated space. Um, that's really for everyone. And talk about the jerseys on the wall too, because that was really cool. Our company is really focused on just making sure that we take care of our people. And um, first off, you know, every door at our company is, is open. Um, every executive office, every office is open. Um, and, and we make that key that, you know, anybody's welcome to come into anybody's office, even our CEOs, even our company presidents, uh, people can walk in and speak with them. There's no bigger office for the CEO or the CFO. Everybody's offices are the, the same size. And, and I think that's really a testament just the, the kind of, you know, culture that we are trying to build here is that, you know, every, everybody's just treated the same and everybody's treated with respect. Um, and then the meeting rooms, um, you know, like you said, that there's some key real estate, you know, areas where people could throw up a corner office, but we really use that as a uh, meeting space or collaborative space or space that, you know, employees and crew members can go and have their meetings and, and discussions in, and um, they can take in the, the views of, of the windows and, and not, you know, just the uh, executives of the company. 
you know, that that's something that is just when they were building this building, I think they thought of every detail and they put every, a lot of thought into everything that they did. Um, the jerseys on the wall, um, again, that's, that's another amazing thing. I'm, I'm so glad that we started doing this. And first year we had a lot of inductees into this. So what we created was this Coastal Companies Hall of Fame. And what it is, is any employee that's been uh, an employee for Coastal Companies for 10 years or longer gets invited to a one-year annual event gala uh, where they can come and be recognized for being with the company for more than 10 years. Anybody who's been with a company more than 15 years gets their gets a sports jersey. It's a I guess it looks like a baseball jersey with their name on the back, and then their number is the year that they started. So every year we have inductees from that same year, and so that's the year that goes on the back of your jersey. Uh, there's a big um, you know, event that we do along with the the 10 year uh, inductees. It's food, it's drink, it's dancing. Um, we actually have that here at uh, Coastal Sunbelt. And um, then the jerseys get hung on the wall. So everybody knows if they see you and they see your name on the back of your jersey, they know that you're now a 15-year member. And when you leave, your jersey still stays on the wall. So we've had a, quite a few people that have retired. Uh, so if somebody does retire from Coastal Sunbelt, uh, the, their, their jersey will stay stays. on the wall. Yeah, yeah, their legacy stays. That's amazing. I love that. Correct. So. So right now, currently, we have about over 120 jerseys now hung on the wall. And we had to, you, Lori, when your visit, you didn't see them yet. But we had to actually start putting them now into the Coastal Commons because we ran out of wall space. Hey, that's <laughs> so, a great, so that's they're, a great they're problem to have. <laughs> that's wonderful. Into, into there. Well, good. No, I mean, it's honestly um, the culture, the camaraderie, the just the way everyone was so proud to be at work. It really uh, resonated with me. And I've toured a lot of places in the produce industry. I've worked at the wholesale distribution stage of the supply chain myself for over a decade. I have never really seen um, an office culture the way I witnessed that day when I, you know, stopped by and visited with you all. So, uh, it was, Thank it's, you. yeah, it's been a true pleasure to spotlight the work of Coastal Sunbelt and yourself, Stacy. Uh, we are closing in on our time today, but there's a couple just kind of closing remarks. I'd love to, you know, kind of throw the mic back to you for any one thing that you want to tell, you know, someone that's, that's just starting their career in produce, like any, tidbit of advice or, or a favorite quote that helped motivate you in your tremendous journey? Hmm. So I think the, I think the best advice I can give somebody is to, you know, don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, get involved. Um, you know, you're never going to know what's out there unless you go look for it. You know, just know that if it's something that you try and it's not a, it's not a right fit, it doesn't mean that's the end of the road. So, you know, just keep your options open and, and look, I, you know, I would never have imagined I would ever end here if I, you know, didn't. And I even look back to myself and say, you know, what if I didn't, if I wasn't the person in the room to raise my hand and say, Hey, I'll, I'll try this new challenge or Hey, I'll, I'll try this, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, th there are people out there that will help you. I'm, you know, so don't, don't be afraid. And, and that's, that's how you're going to get recognized. Um, that, that would be my yeah. best piece of advice. No, that's great advice. And, you know, before we, before we sign off and say goodbye to everyone today, I do want to bring up one of the most admirable things about you as a, you know, just as a human being. And that is, uh, you know, your discipline and work ethic as it relates to running. And I know that from our pre-show conversations, you're currently preparing for a big marathon. By the time this airs, you will have completed uh, this marathon, but yeah. <laughs> tell our, tell our listeners today a little bit about your journey with running and how that kind of carries over into what you do as an executive and as a mom. Uh, absolutely. So I don't think most people know this, so this will probably be a, a first known. So one of the first hotels that I started calling on, as I said, back in 2003, uh, was a hotel down in Baltimore, and the executive chef down there was a marathon runner, and I had never won a marathon before, and I went, I was meeting with him one day, and I said, oh, yeah, I really want to try to run, but I, I don't know what I'm doing. He says, well, why don't you just start meeting with me and my running group? I run with a group of five or ten people, and you can just start training with us, and you can run your first marathon with me. And I was afraid to say no, so I said okay. And I, I as you can tell from me, is I love to accept challenges. So I was like, right. absolutely, I'm going to do this. 
So I said yes, and the, I remember training for my first marathon, and we would meet and, and, and run, and I thought it was, I, I was like, I don't know how I can do this, and so, but I did it, and I ran my first marathon, and I said, you know, I want to I try this again. So my first marathon is probably because of Coastal Sunbelt Produce, and I was able to meet this amazing chef who was a runner that I'm still friends with to this day in, in the running community, and so since then, I've just kind of just have really became disciplined and has incorporated that into my, my lifestyle, um, just being healthy. And, and so, you know, when I travel now for work, I, I always look at different places of where I can run. I make sure that running is a part of anything I do on a daily basis. It's, it's just something that keeps me sound and it's my, my therapy as I call it. But, um, I can say now that I, I, I'm close to 50. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be running the Boston marathon in 2020 and I'm trying to make that my 50th marathon, um, that I'm going to run. So, um, wow. it's, it's been something I've gotten, I've improved on and it's, it's, um, it's, it's great self-discipline for me. And it's great to see that, uh, you know, something I can keep doing and, 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 and I love it. It's just been just a part yeah. of who I am now for sure. Well, that's phenomenal. How important is press, fresh produce in your, in your marathon training? Uh, it's absolutely important because I, I do, primarily stick to more of a fresh fruit and vegetable, uh, diet with carbs. Um, Mm -hmm. and so that, that's, that's where my main, my main focus is. So I love going and traveling to our conferences because I'm always excited that I know that there's going to be fresh fruits and vegetables there. And, um, it's, it's, it's important in everything that I do. And, uh, what's really cool is, you know, when my kids, you know, see me now, they see mommy running and they see mommy eating fruits and vegetables and they see mommy working in produce. And so it's, um, you know, I think all those are just great things that they're, that they're doing. And I'm trying to be a good role model for, for them as well. Uh, and that you are doing, and you're a good role model to myself and every other female in this industry. So Stacy, I can't thank you enough for being our guest on today's show. Uh, like all episodes, we'll throw the mic back to you for our final goodbyes. But uh, again, thank you for being part of the show. Everyone, please, please connect with uh, Stacy. Follow along with what she's doing as a professional on LinkedIn. You can find Coastal Sunbelt online as well. Um, that's at coastalsunbelt.com. And Stacy, please sign us off today from today's show. Well, thank you, Lori. And thank you, guests. Pleasure to be on the show. And I look forward to seeing you out in the industry. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.